Today, we're modifying our product page so that only the varied images are shown. For example, only the red images are shown when red is selected, only black when black is selected, and so on. This was a pretty fun one, so I hope you guys like it. This was actually another request by you. Thank you so much for your suggestions. Remember, many of our videos are topics suggested by you, and we want you to prompt us. So put the video idea that you want to see in the comments below, and we'll take the most popular suggestions and make a video for you. All right, let's filter some product images. So let's take a look at this product on our demo store. We can see here that there's actually quite a few images and uh, each variant color actually has multiple images. So let's say for black, we've got one, two, three, four, with blue, one, two, three, four, and so on. And so the change that we want to make is whenever we select any variant, it actually only shows the relevant images and hides the rest. Now on the product page, we can actually show the images in multiple ways. So for example, here we have thumbnails, but if you come to the theme editor, you can actually change the layout. So here we show thumbnails, you can show stacked, right? So this is gonna make these images look like this, and it's just gonna be a big list. Um, and there's you know two columns and thumbnail carousel. And so, this fix is actually going to work for all these different ways. Uh, we just need to update the code uh, in various places. So let's do that right now. Now, in the themes area, make sure you make a copy of your current theme because if anything goes wrong with this customization, you can always revert back to your old version uh, without needing to figure out what went wrong. All right, so let's edit code. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up the product media gallery file. All right, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assign a couple variables right up top. So this first variable represents the meta field that we're going to be creating a little bit later in this video. And the second one is the actual variant that's selected on the product page. And we're going to need both of these for the code that we're going to paste later on. So if you scroll down, you're going to see that there's this media gallery section. So the media gallery actually represents the um, the stacked or uh, columns way of showing the images. And so we're going to edit that first. You're going to see here that there's um, this list element right here. So we can just kind of create some spacing between this previous line and the list element. And if we scroll down a little bit further, you're going to see a for loop and again, another list element. And so what this is here is this first list element is actually the very first image of the product. And the second list element is in a for loop, which is going to loop through all of the additional images of your product. And so whenever you change a variant, right, that first one changes, and then it loops through the rest of them. And that's what's happening here. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to create uh, add a little bit of code before each one of these. So in the first case, we're going to add um, this code right here. And in the second case, we're going to add this code right here. Now, both codes are actually identical except for one small change. And the difference is uh, the comparison between file and media. So in this case, media is the same variable that we're looping through um, right here. Whereas in this case, it's the featured media, right? It's that first image that we're going to be looking at. And so that's the only difference there. Okay, so if we keep scrolling down, we're going to see uh, another list element, right? And in this case, um, the class is a thumbnail list item. And so that's going to be for our thumbnail and thumbnail car carousel versions, uh, which is actually you know the live version that we have here. And again, we're going to create some spacing and uh, scroll down a little bit. We're going to see this list item again, thumbnail list item. So let's create some space in there. And we're going to copy and paste the exact same code, right? So for the first one, we're going to copy and paste the featured media version, right? Because this is the first image. And for the second one, we're going to copy and paste the regular media version. So the code that we've pasted is checking if the selected variant 
matches the image. And if so, then it'll show it. If it doesn't, then it's going to hide it. And it's going to do that by adding um, an additional class in each one of these, uh, these list items. And to do that, we have to add a variable into our class area right here. So we're going to create a little space and then copy and paste this additional class because that's uh, the variable that we're creating here. So if we're hiding it, we're going to add the class. If we're not, then it's just going to be blank. And so we have to do that for every list item that we, uh, we've we modified. Right? So this one here, we want to add that there as well. And then we've also um, want to update this list item. So we can add it at the very end. And finally, we have one right here. So once we've added that additional class, now we need to add an additional data parameter within our list items as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to just add that right here. And so this is a parameter that we're adding here because our JavaScript that we're going to create a little bit later is going to reference this variable here. And so we're going to go back through our list items and just add that in place. OK, we just need to add some styling to um, define what happens when uh, the item has that class. And so we're going to come to the very bottom, and we're going to add some style, right? So uh, if, the, if it has hide image, then we're going to display none, which is just going to hide it. OK, so now that we've done that, we can just save, and we can move on. So the next update we're going to need to make is in our global.js file. And so this is the JavaScript. Uh, the reason we need to do this is because when we load the page, it's going to filter things. But then once we change the variant, that relies on JavaScript to uh, make the additional filtering. So it's like if we have green right now and we go to blue, it's going to need to know, OK, I got to hide all the green ones now and show the blue ones. And so that's what we're going to do in the in the global.js. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look for the variant selects class, right? So this is the class that already exists in Shopify to uh, identify that there's been a change in variants. And we're going to create a new method. So we're going to add this method here uh, under update media. So we're going to call this this. Uh, dot update media grouping. So update media grouping is our new method. And we're going to just look for our update media here. And so we can just paste it underneath. And this is our update media grouping method. So let's save that. And now all we have to do is create the meta fields that we were talking about earlier. So we can hop into our meta fields area, and we're going to create a new definition um, for a meta object. And we're going to call this variant images grouping. And we're going to add three fields. The first one is going to be a single line text. We're going to call this name. And we're actually going to add a regular expression, um, which is the like a pattern, the values must match. So this means that the the name has to have a certain format. And so the format that we're defining here is that it's alphanumeric plus dashes and underscores. And the reason why we're doing this is because this name is actually going to be searched for by JavaScript. And JavaScript uh, has some limitations in terms of what characters it can uh, accept. And so we're going to just limit it to alphanumeric plus dash plus underscore. OK, and so let's add that field. Next, we're going to create a field for variant, so product variant, and it's going to be a list of variants, and we're going to call this variants. OK, we'll add that. And then finally, we're going to create a, a field that's type file. We're going to call it a list of files, and we're going to say um, file grouping. 
um, and we can add that. Okay, so now we can save. And what we're going to do now is, now that we've created our meta object, we can go to our meta fields, products, and we're going to create a meta field using that meta object that we just created. And so, variant images grouping, that's the one we just created. And we're going to call this um, variant images grouping list. And just a note, these names are actually pretty specific. Um, so you don't have to follow exactly the names I'm using, but uh, the way the code is written, it's looking for these names. So if you do deviate from the names I'm giving here, then the code will have to be updated. If you follow it exactly, then you don't need to worry about that. OK, and so we're going to be doing a, a list of entries for this variant images grouping. Um, and then so we can go ahead and save that. Now we can head over to our uh, meta objects area, right? So content meta, meta objects, and we're going to add an entry. And we're going to use this new meta object type that we just created. And so uh, if we come to our product here, we can see here that uh, let's say the color black is our variant option. So we're going to call this, uh, let's call this t-shirt black. And next what we're gonna do is we're going to select the product variants um, and we're gonna scroll down and go to the product that we want to create this grouping for. And so in this case, it's our uh, t-shirt. And so we can come to the very bottom uh, and we can see here, this is the product that we're looking at. And so uh, because it's black, I'm going to select all the black variants. And what we're doing here is we're saying, if any of these variants are selected, then we're going to show the list of images right here. So we're going to now select the images. And so we're going to pick the black ones. So we've got this one, this one, this one, and this one. So these are the four black images in our listing. We have all these other images that are unrelated, but we only want to select these ones, right? And so what we've now done is said, if any of these black variants are selected, then show these files. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and save that. Oh, right. And so this is why we set that uh, format earlier, because we want to avoid having spaces and stuff in, a, in our title. So it'll prevent us from making that mistake. And so let's just delete those spaces and keep it with dashes. And then now it should have the right format to save. So let's go back and let's create a second one, actually. So let's go t-shirt blue. And let's do the same thing. We're going to select the variants that are going to be grouped together. So that's these blue ones right here. And then we're also going to select the files that should be shown whenever any of those blue variants are selected, which would be these blue files right here. So let's just quickly do that for all the different colors. OK, so now that we've added all of our five colors, what we can do is we can go back to our products area, select the product that we are going to be grouping our images for. We come down to the bottom, and there's going to be this meta fields area. And we can see here there's the variant images grouping list, which is the one we created earlier. So now we're going to select our entries, and we're going to select the ones that are relevant for our product. OK, so we've got our five colors. We're going to save that. And now we have everything we need for the code to find the correct variants and match them to the files that you want to show so that we filter them on a product page. So let's take a look. And so now we can refresh. And we can see here that we're only getting the black images. And if we go to blue, we're only getting the blue, only the green, red, white. And this will also work if we change our image layout to stacked or two columns, whatever it may be. Right. So here we're seeing just the white images, and we get the red, blue, green, 
and black. So there we have it. We've filtered our product images to only show the ones that are related to the select variant. And we've done this using meta fields, which I think makes it much easier to organize. As always, let me know if this is helpful. And more importantly, if you want to see a customization, add it in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.